It's not a requirement for video games to tell a story, but oftentimes the most memorable ones do. The twists and turns of the plot and relationships of the characters, if done well, can make a title truly unforgettable. As games and their worlds continue to expand in scope, however, it's sometimes not possible to fit everything into the main story or fully explain something over the course of a cutscene, and thus, games, especially those of the open-world persuasion, turn to other means of storytelling that can help fill in the gaps and give fans the opportunity to discover more about their favourite universes. Whether these additional narratives fill out a good chunk of backstory or just give minor context to the events at hand, players often have to actively seek them out for themselves, making sure to scour every nook and cranny in the hopes of finding some lore. And we've chosen just a few such stories that we think are worth your time. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 hidden stories in video games. Number 10. Ingrid's Necklace, Resident Evil Village. Many of the Resident Evil games supplement their mutant-invested main plots with side stories told from the point of view of those dealing with the experience, and Resident Evil Village is no different. While all the notes Ethan finds help to provide some context to proceedings, the most obscure story to find is the one that surrounds Ingrid's necklace. This bit of jewellery will serve as an oddly specific bit of world-building to most folks, obviously referencing another captive of the tall vampire lady, but likely not much else. There is more to it than is immediately obvious, though, as it actually ties back into the game Maiden Demo. This preview, released just before the full game in early 2021, has players start in a cell deep in the dungeons of Castle Dimitrescu before making their escape to the main part of the castle where they will find a necklace, sporting the jaw of an unspecified animal and a description suggesting that it wards off evil. In the main game, Ethan will wind up in the same dungeon and stumble across the very same necklace, now relabeled Ingrid's Necklace. Given that none of the four ladies are named Ingrid, it's safe to say this initially innocuous item tells the story of its unfortunate previous owner quite plainly. Number 9. The Conjunction of the Spheres – The Witcher Series Having started life as a series of novels, there's a lot of Witcher lore that the games don't directly explain to the player, and they occasionally rely on less explicit methods to help build the world. One event players can learn more about by raiding every bookshelf they come across is known as the Conjunction of the Spheres. This tumultuous and world-changing event occurred 1500 years before the events of the games, opening rifts between dimensions of the multiverse and flooding the world of gnomes, dwarves, and elves with all of the creatures the series is known for as well as other displaced races, including the humans, whose world ended up being completely destroyed in the Cataclysm. There are books in each of the three games that reference this event and explain it a bit for those who take the time to read them, with each detailing in its own way how the worlds collided and caused monsters to appear, humans to gain the ability to do magic, and the decades of strife and tension between all of the displaced peoples. This isn't all of the lore that's out there in the games, though, and it's well worth exploring thoroughly as you guide Geralt on his adventures. Number 8. Tenenbaum's Audio Diaries Bioshock the world of Bioshock is one that builds its atmosphere expertly and adds to its story both with environmental storytelling and the many radio conversations found throughout the course of the game. Aiding both of these are the numerous audio diaries that players can collect as they progress through the world of Rapture. All of these build upon the narrative and allow players to learn about Rapture's residents, from workers and concerned mothers to the crazed perfectionist Dr. Steinman and even Andrew Ryan himself. But perhaps some of the most interesting of all of these belong to geneticist and surrogate mother of the Little Sisters. Bridget Tenenbaum. This series of musings tells the story of the young prodigy and scientific genius, documenting how she became interested in both genetics and questionable experimentation along with her discovery of the sea slugs which were rich with the genetic code-altering Adam. It also tells the tale of the little sister's creation and Tenenbaum's emotional interactions with them, realising that she feels a maternal instinct towards them and eventually coming to hate what she's done to them. It's no wonder then that she has such a strong reaction if the player chooses to harvest any of her little ones. Number 7. The Healing Church – Bloodborne if there's one thing that From Software is known for at this point, it's difficult games. If it's two things, it's difficult games with esoteric stories that are less drip-fed to players than they are dangled from a stick 50 miles away on the other side of a sheer crevasse in the midst of a torrential downpour of poison and knives. We could have chosen any of their most recent games to feature, but we're playing favourites in this case, so there. Most of Bloodborne's lore comes from the meagre item descriptions, with a healthy dose of assumption and crowdsourcing. If players are willing to piece things together, 
that though they can discover more about the major story catalyst, the Healing Church. Founded long ago by Lawrence, the first vicar, their goal was to use the old blood to perform blood ministration, curing all disease and transcending humanity. But this also created the Beast Scourge in the first place, and is the whole reason Yarnum needs hunters, who themselves go through blood ministration and add to the problem. That alone is enough to wrap your head around, and we haven't even mentioned the Great Ones or Amygdala yet, or why umbilical cords could change the fate of the world. Genuinely, we could be here all day, so it's best we move on. Number 6. Red Diary, Silent Hill 4, The Room. Silent Hill, as with Resident Evil, often uses notes to expand its story and explain a bit about the world and its twisted inhabitants. The most overlooked title, Silent Hill 4 The Room, does this as well, with its small, normal world setting providing pages of information that are collectively known as the Red Diary. The first trip that protagonist Harry Townsend takes down his flat's horrible rabbit hole sends him to the subway where he meets Cynthia Velasquez, and it becomes even more obvious something's weird when dog monsters burst through a bathroom door. As Henry fights through the area, he separated from Cynthia and she ends up being killed, a strange number emblazoned on her chest. He wakes up in his apartment soon after and finds a note under his front door, and upon reading it he discovers that it's from an investigator who's looking into a string of murders that closely mirror what happened to Cynthia. Henry receives more of these notes as time goes on, and while a handful are required for puzzle solutions, the vast majority of them can be easily missed if players don't return to the flat often or ignore the front door, meaning they will never be able to get the full story of what's happening with Room 302. Number 5. Saint Denis Vampire – Red Dead Redemption 2 Rockstar games have a multitude of activities and side stories to explore, and while this is true in the GTA games, it's Red Dead Redemption and its sequel that really seem to take things to the extreme. As they explore the massive world of Red Dead Redemption 2, players can run into characters with their own string of side quests or stumble across strange tableaus that defy explanation. These cover everything from reclusive inventors to aliens, but one of the most complicated to actually track down is the vampire in Saint Denis. This strange NPC isn't linked to any specific quest, instead requiring players to wander the streets and keep on the lookout for five different bits of graffiti which will then be jotted down in their notebook and tracked on a map. Once players have located all of these wall scrolls, lines will connect between each location and create a star, and if they then venture out at night between midnight and 1am and visit the small alley located right in the centre of the shape, they will find a pale man hunched over a dead body. He even drops bat wings as loot, just to really drive home the point that the supernatural is alive and well in Red Dead Redemption 2's Wild West. Number 4. A Shared Universe – Control Admittedly, this could be considered a bit of a wild card entry, because Control did end up getting a DLC that was entirely centred around previous Remedy title Alan Wake, so this lore isn't nearly as secret as the rest, but the links were there even before it was released, so we'll allow it. The most obvious nods to the fact that the events of Alan Wake took place in Control's universe are the Altered World Events case file that directly reference Alan and his experience in Bright Falls. There are even two altered items, a typewritten page and a coffee thermos and a note about Night Spring the Twilight Zone-like TV show which turns out to be something the Federal Bureau of Control has sanctioned. In addition to this, Jesse's brother Dylan mentions having dreams that seem to overlap with both Alan Wake and Max Payne. Even fictional rock band Old Gods of Asgard are present in both games, providing Control with the tune for the exceptional Ashtray Maze sequence and Alan Wake with a backing track to the farm fight. With Alan Wake 2 on the horizon, it's likely we'll see even more crossover and eagle-eyed fans will have to be sure to keep on the lookout if they want to truly understand what's happening behind the scenes. Number 3. Sunken Scrolls – Splatoon Series the world of Splatoon is a colourful one, and it's easy to take it at face value, especially as it's a Nintendo IP and cutesy, family-friendly fun is their whole brand. However, much like Pokemon, there is more to it than meets the eye, and the true nature of the Splatooniverse is much darker than you'd expect. The collectibles known as Sunken Scrolls are found in each of the game's single-player modes and provide a little insight into the squiddy world with their short and sweet text blurbs, though they don't initially hint at something unsettling. Eventually, however, things take a more sinister to turn, with references to how the Inklings evolved directly from squids and the mention of creatures of the surface being driven to extinction by rising sea levels allowing the so-called Mollusk Era to begin. This particular scroll implies that the world of Splatoon is, in fact, Earth, albeit several thousand years in the future, something which is only reinforced via another scroll that shows a 12,000-year-old fossilised human-like skeleton. The only thing that makes this a bit less concerning is that one of the consoles next to the fossil appears to be a Wii U. Someone playing with one of those at that point? Not a chance. Number 2. Sadie's Story – Halo 3 ODST 
As the orbital drop shock troopers of Halo 3 ODST attempt to drop down onto a Covenant carrier stationed above New Mombasa, they are thrown drastically off course and find themselves on the streets, causing the unnamed rookie protagonist to jump into the fight at the deep end. It's not all about shooting though, and as players progress through Halo 3 ODST, they are able to collect special audio logs from a series of data terminals. Each of these is accompanied by still images presented in slideshow fashion, and as a whole, they are known as Sadie's story. Unsurprisingly, the central player in this side drama is named Sadie, who is a resident of New Mombasa, and the events that are told over the course of the 30 collected diaries center around her and her experiences with the Covenant invasion in 2552, as well as her dealings with other people, whether they be kind or unsavory, as she tries to make her way to her father. The narrative that these collectibles present, and the way that it can influence and affect the main game, elevates them to something beyond what a lot of side stories tend to accomplish, providing not only lore as a reward for going the extra mile to collect them all, but a potentially different game experience as well. Number 1. Ratman's Dens, Portal and Portal 2 The Portal games are fantastic and have a very strong narrative woven through them, but that's not to say there's no lore to be found outside of the main plots. If players are willing to explore as they make their way through the various test chambers and back areas in both of the titles, they are sure to stumble across small rooms littered with rubbish, chairs, radios and strange writing. Doug Ratman, nicknamed the Rat Man due to his inclination to hide in the walls, is responsible for these and is the sole survivor of GLaDOS's neurotoxin never appearing in person but leaving obvious traces all the same. These Ratman dens are found in both games and don't always make the most sense, sometimes giving clues such as the famous The Cake is a Lie and other times seeming to be mad ramblings that are a result of justified paranoia. Most interesting is the den in the second game's Test Chamber 6, where if Chell enters with a radio, an audio file will play that if decoded, shows an image of the companion cube on the moon. Is this an allusion to the ending, or does it mean Ratman is there himself? Given Valve's aversion to the number three, we'll likely never know for sure, but what do you think? Let us know below.